The news at noon starts right now. New at noon, you might say life's been a bit of a trip this week for some people involved in evacuations related to Hurricane Laura. Hundreds of bus drivers have been on the road since earlier in the week shuttling people to safety here in San Antonio. Katrina Weber was there this morning as they set out to say goodbye to the Alamo City. With their luggage in hand, all of these people were ready to take a load off to have a seat in a section of this bus that they're not used to seeing. You know, we just want to get people to safety. We're just moving people to safety. Frank Stevens and the others spent this week in the driver's seat, busing people from the danger zones of Hurricane Laura. I'm originally from New Orleans. We, we have hurricane parties. This time, Stevens was part of a caravan of care. Bus drivers from across the country who left the safety of home to help people whose homes were in harm's way. We have buses went to uh, Lake Charles and some went to Galveston and evacuated people, uh, a lot of senior citizen homes. Terenza Curry went to a town north of Beaumont where he was desperately needed. A lot of people don't have the means to leave and when it's time to leave and they make it mand mandatory for them to leave, then they have to just get up and go. With a local evacuation shelter cleared out, they prepared to pull out. The shuttle took them from a downtown hotel to their own buses near the AT&T Center. For some of these drivers, it seems the road trip still may not be over. They say they're now on the road to destination unknown, just waiting for the next assignment. For now, though, they're putting this hurricane in their past and San Antonio in their rearview mirrors. Katrina Weber, case that 12 news. Also new at noon, police officers arrested a man who took off running after they tried to stop him while he was smoking marijuana along the river walk. It happened just after 7 a.m. near Commerce Street when a San Antonio Park police officer spotted a man who appeared to be smoking that marijuana. As the officer approached him, he took off running. Officers say during the chase, he appeared to be reaching into his pants, possibly to grab a weapon. And that's when the park officer called for help. The man was later arrested on the street level on West Commerce near Bowie. Officers found a gun on him as well as a wad of cash. And firefighters managed to keep a transformer from severely damaging nearby businesses last night. It happened around 1030 in the 1700 block of Fredericksburg Road near University Hospital. Firefighters say they think a vehicle knocked down a utility pole which landed on a gas line next to a 7-Eleven. The oil from the transformer leaked out and caused the fire to spread into a parking lot. Firefighters were able to contain the fire to the transformer. No injuries were reported. San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help to find two people accused of robbing a Circle K store on Judson Road. Police say that the armed robbery happened this past Monday when a victim was trying to get into her vehicle. SAPD says the two suspects pointed a gun at her and demanded her car. The suspects got away in the vehicle. If you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for your information. Police are also looking for the people responsible for robbing a 7-Eleven on the city's south side. Investigators say two armed men entered the store in the 6,000 block of I-35 South yesterday morning. Police say both men stole items from the store from employees and customers. Again, if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at that number on your screen. Back to Hurricane Laura. It made landfall as the fourth strongest hurricane in U.S. history. And now that storm is headed northeast. Laura pounded coastal communities in Texas and Louisiana and Arkansas, leaving devastating impacts. ABC's Elwin Lopez is in Baton Rouge. Homes and businesses ripped apart, streets underwater. Laura's devastating impact stretches for hundreds of miles across three states. At least six people dead after Laura barreled through Louisiana, Arkansas and Texas, packing 150 mile per hour winds. The monstrous storm making landfall as a category four hurricane. It was a roller coaster. Terrifying. Oh, Terrifying. Yes. Hundreds of thousands of people without power in the region. Areas between White Lake and Cameron completely submerged. Satellite images show just how little was spared. I'm happy. It's just how much do I have to go through? A reported tornado spawned by Laura ripped apart the roof from this church in Lake City, Arkansas. In nearby Jonesboro, a woman was rescued after a tree fell on her mobile home. Entire communities left to pick up what Laura left behind, but many say they're grateful it wasn't worse. It's crazy to hear wind blowing that hard. It makes a sound that, you know, I've never heard before. And so uh, 
there were some times where I was like, I had to say a couple extra prayers, like, Lord, keep us safe. But he saw us through, and I'm very thankful. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Baton Rouge. The Texas Diaper Bank needs donations to help families impacted by Hurricane Laura. Diapers and feminine products can be dropped off at the San Antonio location on Grandstand Drive. That's over by Ingram Road. You can also make monetary donations at TexasDiaperBank.org. If you are in immediate need, send an email to relief at TexasDiaperBank.org with a request for assistance. With recovery efforts in full swing, the Red Cross is looking for some help. Today, our KSET community partners are holding a Hurricane Laura relief phone bank with the American Red Cross. It's happening right now until 11 o'clock tonight. The number to call is 855-678-GIVE or 855-678-4483. We've also posted this information for an online application. If you'd like to donate your time as a volunteer, for example, just visit ksatcommunity.com. A local team proving it's definitely possible to make friends during a pandemic. Still ahead, how he's doing it with no technology needed to make the connection. And what a big night. It is the kickoff of Friday night's big game coverage. Larry Ramirez with a preview of one of those big games, Cornerstone and Cal Allen, coming up in sports. Many people struggling with virtual learning, but those challenges can be greater if a person is homeless. That's why Haven for Hope is reaching out to help students without a home. We have details next. Virtual learning has its challenges from getting acquainted with and accessing technology, and those challenges can be even harder to overcome if you are homeless. Sarah Costa spoke with a single mom and her daughter about how they are making it work and how Haven for Hope is helping them. I was working and the pandemic affected me tremendously, so I became homeless. Aurora Morillo is a single mom to third grader Aurora Rodriguez. On top of trying to find another job and place for them to live during the pandemic, she had to figure out how they would do virtual learning. It's a bit challenging to raise a child by yourself and have everything shut down. Thank God for Haven for Hope. Since July, they have been staying at Haven for Hope in the family dorms. They aren't alone when it comes to needing access to technology and a safe place for students to virtually learn. Haven for Hope says they're helping out 64 school age children with virtual learning that spans across six different districts and 20 different schools. The nonprofit's chief development officer, Celeste Eggert, says it's been a learn as they go process. Over the summer, they've been able to connect each student with their school to ensure each resident student has the technology they need. But I think what's been so helpful to us is having that communities and schools staff member here on our campus who has those relationships with all the schools that our kids are enrolled in. Haven for Hope also provides Wi-Fi to its family residents. Murillo says she doesn't know what she would have done without it since she is also virtually learning. So I'm going through college. I'm trying to work at the same time. I had to switch to online. And right now they have the Wi-Fi that I need to continue pursuing my hopes and dreams. And the help they've received at Haven has also inspired her daughter Aurora to one day do the same and give back in the future. I think I want to work here. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with the live cam once again, another almost cloudless day. <laughs> yes. We, you know, we're watching the weather everywhere else and we feel really bad for the folks that got wiped out by the hurricane. It's been kind of same old, same old here. Yeah, and, it, and it'll stay that way through the weekend. Our big story here locally will continue to be the heat. It will be unseasonably hot today and into the weekend, and I'll have your full weekend forecast coming up here shortly. First, checking on the aquifer, down six tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours. And in the pollen count, things are looking pretty good for a Friday. Mold is low. Fall elm and ragweed are also present. They are low as well. Uh, more on the heat advisory that's in place beginning at 1 p.m. And, of course, your weekend forecast coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV.
tough time making friends during a pandemic? A local teen proving it's definitely possible, it's safe, and no technology is needed to make the connection. The teen, Jovian Tapador, launched a community service project to connect with local senior citizens through letters. Alicia Barrera met up with the teen and has the full story on how you can sign up to be a pin pal. Good afternoon. Well, pen pals are definitely needed for two local senior living centers, and we're told already about 20 letters have been sent, but of course more would be great. But first they want to make sure it's all about the quality. Joven Tapiador is an eighth grader with a big heart, and he started this letters project with the organization Summer of Service San Antonio. He was inspired by his relationship with his grandmother who lives in Ecuador, and he knows he's lucky enough to FaceTime her, but realized that's not the case for other seniors, especially especially ones in nursing homes, as no visitors are allowed during the pandemic due to safety precautions. Now he's calling anyone with a pen, paper and stamps to take a few minutes and learn about someone else. I am asking them to uh, communicate to the older generation and try and bridge the gap since there's a lot of perspectives and viewpoints we can share with one another. You know, you can't just send one letter to a senior and then have them send one letter back and never talk again. You got to kind of build that relationship with a senior. On KSAT.com, we have a link to create a free account with Summer of Service San Antonio and sign up for the community service project. Each one page letter counts as 30 minutes. These letters will be sent to Heritage Rehab and Nursing Home as well as Colonial Gardens Nursing Home, both here in San Antonio. And just make sure if you plan to participate somewhere on that envelope, you want to write SOS San Antonio. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Great idea. Yeah, nice to see teens concerned, isn't it? Yes. And speaking of concern, a lot of people in Tennessee concerned with Laura. Now she pounded the coast there in Louisiana. She's not going away fast, is she? And she's causing trouble. Even as Laura was weakening yesterday, caused some power outages and damage in North Louisiana, some tornadoes in Arkansas late yesterday, and now prompting some severe weather across portions of Tennessee. So, Laura, a tropical depression with winds of 30 miles per hour will continue to weaken into uh, what we're going to call a remnant low by late tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but you can still see the circulation of tropical depression, Laura, here, and this is sending some of the outer bands into portions of Middle Tennessee. And there's a tornado watch box out. This will be in place until 4 p.m. for portions of Central Tennessee, uh, far north Mississippi, and northern Alabama as well. This line of storms uh, has some rotation in it, and actually there's a tornado warning right there just off to the southwest of the city of Nashville. So Laura's effects continuing to be felt across the country here at home. We've got a ton of sunshine out there. It is going to be very hot this afternoon. Uh, in light of that, it's going to be a CPS energy peak energy demand day on this Friday. You're encouraged to lower your energy use from the hours of 3 to 7 p.m. A really easy way to help do that and ease the strain on the power grid. Uh, maybe hold off on using your larger uh, appliances as we get into that time period three to seven. So today CPS energy peak energy demand day, a ton of sunshine out there. We did have a few morning clouds, but they are gone. It is hot. It is hazy. Check out our air temperatures and our heat indices. So the air temperature is in white 94 at the airport, but it feels like 105 and check out some of these heat indices down closer to the coast, feeling like 112 in Beeville. Heat index of 105 in Catula. So why are these heat indices so high? Our dew points are still very elevated. They're generally in the mid to upper 70s. This is super gross air out there. So again, once we get into the 70s with our dew points, that air is just really, really heavy. And when it's this humid, it's very hard or it's more difficult for our bodies to cool themselves down efficiently as compared to when the air is very dry. So we're talking big time heat indices this afternoon uh, An orange up in the hill country feeling as hot as about 102 and then around the San Antonio metro area feeling as hot as 102 to 108 down closer to the coast, even over to Catula heat indices will max out anywhere from about 108 to 112 this afternoon. So because those numbers are so high, a heat advisory will be in place from 1 to 8 p.m. today. And of course, we're Texans. We're used to the heat, right? But if you're outside during peak heating and you're not staying hydrated and you're doing a lot of strenuous activity, again, it's harder for our bodies to cool themselves down efficiently and heat illness can set in if you're not careful. So please keep that in mind this afternoon and over the course of the weekend, because I think we'll see similar numbers this weekend as well. And take a look at Texas, a big portion of the state under heat advisories 
uh, during the day today. We'll see high temperatures max out around 101 here in San Antonio. More triple digits up to I-20 and up in the Texas Panhandle. Very similar story tomorrow. No big weather makers moving through the state on Saturday, so that's going to keep a lot of folks very toasty this weekend. We're looking at 102, our high temperature tomorrow. So we'll be climbing into the upper 90s here very shortly, maxing out near 101 this afternoon under sunny skies. I can't rule out a few little clouds here or there this afternoon, but for the most part, plenty of sunshine. Really the one piece of good news in the forecast, we'll have a nice breeze in place kicking in this afternoon, but it's out of the southeast. So again, that's why we're so humid. So double edged sword there. So staying very hot through the weekend and early next week, it does look like we'll see our weather pattern shake up by the middle of next week, and that'll reintroduce a chance of rain. We'll talk more about that coming up next half hour. Guys, those are painful temperatures. I know, sorry. We've had enough, Katie. <laughs> Sorry. She went with super gross. Not just gross, but super gross. Beyond gross. Super Beyond gross. gross. So speaking of super, you know what tonight is, right? Tonight is the kickoff of Here high school football. Yes, Whoa. our first Friday night, yeah. big game coverage. It's finally here now. It's just 1A through 4A. That's a lot of good football, though. And last night, the Fredericksburg Batlin Billies kicked off the season against Monahans. We got those highlights. Plus, Coach Trailer at a UTSA gave one of his players a huge reward coming up. Texas high school football season kicked off last night with COVID-19 guidelines in place like just one player from each side out for the coin toss. Fredericksburg, Batlin Billy is taking on Monahans at San Angelo Stadium. Already up 6-0, Fredericksburg's Cole Immel airs it out to Judd Beard who comes back for it inside the five for a 40-yard gain. Moments later, Javier Rodriguez scores an easy touchdown to make it 12-0. Batlin Billy's no bands, but they had cheerleaders at the game. So let's go ahead and go to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and Fredericksburg wins their season opener a sweet 55 to 20 victory. Cornerstone Christian will open their football season tonight at Cal Allen Wildcats. Week one of big game coverage is finally here. The Warriors are very talented on both sides of the ball. Quarterback Lucas Coley is an Arkansas commit and defensive back Nahamani Harris recently verbal to UTSA just to name two guys. Cornerstone will look to be one of the most successful teams in the state. Cal Allen is ranked number four in 4A Division I by Dave Campbell's Texas Football and they own the longest active Texas high school football playoff streak at 30 five straight seasons. Cal Allen, obviously a great program with, a, with an extremely great tradition. Uh, it's, it's a challenge for us, and that's, and that's what we're looking for here. We want to compete against the best, and we obviously, the, we believe they fit that bill, so we're, we're looking forward to the opportunity to compete. Focus on preparing and putting my team in the best position to go out there and win. I mean, we've got a tough opponent. They haven't lost a home game since 2016, so just getting prepared and go out there and give them their first loss since 2016 at home. It's the first game of my senior season. Me and my team, we've been working all summer towards this goal. And uh, I know that Cal Allen, they've lost a brother. He was actually a friend of mine here at Churchill. So, I mean, I, I'm, it, this game is going to be real important to me, but we're going to come in, we're going to give it our all, and I, I think we're going to come out with this W. Monty is talking about Cal Allen's senior, Gabe Cooley, who was fatally stabbed on Sunday. Cal Allen will host Cornerstone tonight at 7.30. A cool thing happened at UTSA football practice Thursday morning. Head coach Jeff Trailer announced that walk-on running back Kadari Johnson was being placed on scholarship, and he did it after playfully messing around with the young man. Told him all that Kadari, who's not a punt returner, if he caught Lucas's punt, there'd be no running. Since he didn't catch the punt, it's his fault. It made everybody run, so everybody's had to run. So you can imagine the peer pressure and how bad Kadari felt. Instead of making everybody run 18, perfect 40s, we're going to put Kadari on scholarship today. Uh, it just felt amazing. Um, honestly, I thought I was screwed up for the whole team. Dropped the punt return. I didn't want them to have to do 16 perfect 40s. Uh, so when he got me in the push-up position, I was like, man, what did I just do? And then uh, he got up and made that announcement, and they all stormed me. Uh, it was like a big shh, dog pile, man. They were just excited for me. Kadari is a senior out of Michigan, and that was pretty cool, Coach and Trailer. <laughs> trade a scholarship for those uh, 16 perfect. What's a perfect 40, by the way? You know, I have no, no idea. idea. Yeah, I don't know. 
I mean, if you can run 40 yards, isn't, isn't that pretty good? <laughs> then I always run imperfect 40s. In. How's that? <laughs> I guess so. I can't even run 40. So. <laughs> Big there. night tonight, though. Indeed. Pump. Thanks, Larry. The San Antonio Zoo coming back with its drive through experience. Still ahead, we're going to tell you all you need to know about these upcoming events. Also coming up next, we have a live look at today's 57th anniversary of the historic March on Washington and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s iconic I Have a Dream speech. You might be using more hand sanitizer these days, and when you run out, you might be quick to grab what's left at the store. But buyer beware, the FDA has some new concerns about varieties sold in different packaging. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains what to look out for and the reason why. You are looking live at the Lincoln Memorial. Tens of thousands of people are there to descend on the nation's capital for the 57th anniversary of the historic march on Washington and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s iconic I Have a Dream speech. This event is a response to the racial justice movement around the nation and part of a two-day series of virtual and in-person programs. It's going to feature some high-profile speakers as well as families who've lost loved ones in police-involved incidents. ABC's Faith Abube has details. Capping a week of protests demanding racial justice across the country and this high-spirited demonstration which could be heard at the White House as President Donald Trump accepted the Republican nomination. People are frustrated. It's been going on for so long. An estimated 70,000 people motivated to arrive at today's March on Washington, not just to commemorate the historic 1963 March where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech, but also in response to the incidents of perceived racial injustice happening in the country right now. Change has to happen now. And that's what we're here for, because we know that if it doesn't change now, I mean, when will it change? Dr. King's son, Martin Luther King III, is among the many civil rights activists speaking at the Lincoln Memorial. If you remember, the march in 1963 was about jobs and freedom. In 2000, 2020, uh, we unfortunately, because of a pandemic, jobs is still very much important. Jobs are still very much important, but also police brutality and misconduct. Though 57 is an odd year to commemorate, the current racial climate demanded today's march. Marchers saying they're joining this year's demonstration after recent police violence against black men and women. It's time to get your knee off our neck in this country. George Floyd's relatives will join the march alongside Breonna Taylor's, Armand Arbery's, and other families who've lost loved ones at the hands of current and former police officers. Dozens of buses arriving overnight from across the country, carrying marchers young and old. And once the program wraps up here at the Lincoln Memorial, protesters will gather to march about a half mile over to the MLK Memorial. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The teenage suspect in this week's fatal shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin, set to appear before a judge today. According to court records, 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse is facing numerous homicide charges. Rittenhouse is accused of shooting, uh, a shooting that actually ended up with two people dead and another seriously injured. Rittenhouse's attack happened during protests calling for justice after the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Blake was shot seven times in the back and is paralyzed, according to his family. Japan's longest serving prime minister has announced that he will step down due to the health concerns. The long serving leader made that announcement at a press conference today. Shinzo Abe has battled ulcerative colitis for years and two recent hospital visits prompted speculation about his future. Prime Minister Abe's term was set to expire in September of next year. German health officials say they expect a COVID-19 vaccine to be ready early next year. Germany's Public Health Institute says that one or more vaccines could be approved and delivered by the beginning of 2021. But they say there could be a shortage which would require prioritizing who gets the vaccines. Several coronavirus vaccine candidates are being tested in Germany. 
And we just want to remind you about our Hurricane Laura Relief phone bank happening right now with recovery efforts in full swing. The Red Cross is looking for help. Our KSAC community partners and the American Red Cross hosting this event. It is happening until 11 o'clock tonight. Here's the numbers to call 855-678-GIVE or 855-678-4483. We also post an information for online applications. If you would like to donate your time as a volunteer, just visit ksatcommunity.com. Meantime, we take a look outside here with live cam. Uh, it's so murky out there, you can barely see downtown. It's in the <laughs> like you can almost see the muddiness. The, the, yeah, you can, you can see the humidity. You can get your eyes on it, yes. It is incredibly hot and humid out there already. We're already in the mid-90s with a heat index above 100 degrees, and it's just going to get hotter this afternoon. So uh, strap in. It's going to be a scorcher of a weekend. I do want to take one more look at what's left of Laura. Laura's a tropical depression. Winds of 30 miles per hour still spinning counterclockwise there over a portion of West Tennessee and uh, eastern Arkansas. Laura now pushing a line Line of storms, a severe line of storms into portions of Middle Tennessee, including Nashville. There's a tornado watch up for Middle Tennessee down to uh, North Mississippi and Alabama until four o'clock this afternoon. So storms will continue to move through portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, North Alabama today. And then what's left of Laura will continue to drift east over to the east coast by tomorrow afternoon. Meanwhile, here at home, our forecast is going to look much different. No chance of rain, but plenty of heat. We're looking at high temperatures above 100 degrees for the next couple of days, a whole lot of sunshine, a breeze. Yes, but a breeze out of the south southeast. So that's going to keep our humidity high over the course of the weekend. So we're talking big time heat index readings today in the next several days. Heat advisory goes into effect at one o'clock this afternoon. What does that mean and just how hot is it going to get out there uh, over the next few days before we get some relief? Maybe next week we'll talk all about that. Get ready for the weekend coming up in the full forecast. David. The pool looks cool. The Better Business Bureau now warning about new scams going around just after tragedies like Hurricane Laura. Still ahead, we've got more on what you need to be aware of. R. Kelly's attorney says he was attacked in prison. We have the latest on what happened. And the Texans had a little scrimmage last night, a couple of weeks before the start of the season. Larry Ramirez will let you know how they looked coming up in sports. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. R. Kelly's attorney says the singer was attacked in prison. The incident happened Tuesday at the Chicago Federal Prison where he's being held as he awaits trial in New York. Kelly's attorney says an inmate came into his cell and started punching him. He says guards quickly intervened. Kelly was not hurt. Kelly faces several charges in both New York and Illinois, ranging from racketeering to sex trafficking and child pornography. He has pleaded not guilty to all of the charges. The man who shot and killed John Lennon has been denied parole once again. 65-year-old Mark David Chapman is serving a 20 years to life in prison sentence for shooting and killing the Beatles member. It happened nearly 40 years ago. No details were released about why he was grant, not granted parole. A spokesperson says it'll be at least two more years before Chapman can have another hearing. Live look outside with live cam. We are keeping an eye on the thermometer today because if you're working outside, you need to know there's a heat advisory. What, what was it? Yeah. Super gross? Super gross oh, yeah. weather out there. Super yeah, gross. already. Super gross. It, it is not pleasant. Even this morning, that humidity just kind of hit you like a wall when you stepped out. Now we're getting the air temperatures up into the mid 90s, eventually near 100 this afternoon, and the humidity is not going anywhere. So, yeah, super gross today. The aquifer is down six tenths of a foot to 655.3, but we've got a good looking pollen count heading into the weekend. Mold, fall elm, ragweed are all pleasant, but thankfully everything is nice and low. More on that heat advisory that goes into effect really soon and what you can expect over the next few days coming up in the full forecast. JetBlue taking you to new heights by offering buy one, get free round trip flights. Vacations now being offered at deep discounts. You'll have to book your flight and hotel together to get this freebie and use the code BOGO2 at checkout. 
And if you're not looking to fly the friendly skies anytime soon, how about a staycation? SeaWorld is offering free admission for the rest of the year. If you buy a season pass for 2021, that pass will also come with other perks, including free parking, free admission into Aquatica. Plus, next year, there won't be any blackout dates. What a burger. Well, how about two? Score Bogo Pico de Gallo burgers at Whataburger. Use the Whataburger app to order one of these sandwiches, and the offer for our freebie will show up in your account. You can get the app in your phone's app store or the Google Play Store. David Sears, KZ12 News. In today's consumer news, people who want to be generous also need to be cautious. The Better Business Bureau says scamming often happens after tragedies like wildfires in California or Hurricane Laura. Before making a donation, the Bureau advises you to visit give.org. Make sure the charity is legitimate. Donors should also ask about the organization's plans to address immediate or gradual needs. Red flags include vague statements about how funds will be used and claims that say 100% of the donations will be sent directly to victims and their families. A new restaurant serving Mexican street food coming to the bottling department at the Pearl this October. Chilaquil will serve dishes inspired by the dish Chilaquiles. It'll be a brick and mortar location after serving the dishes from a food truck around the Alamo City. The owners say they will offer the traditional chilaquiles of tortilla chips covered in salsa and cheese. And they will also offer various takes on the recipe. If you're feeling your school spirit, then you can take part in theme nights at the San Antonio Zoo starting tonight. You can decorate your car with your school spirit and then take a little drive through the zoo. It takes place from 5 to 8 this evening. If you are not feeling your Spartan spirit, there are some other theme nights in the next few weeks. Labor Day weekend is Pachanga Night to celebrate Hispanic heritage. And September 11th and 12th is Red, White, and Zoo Night. You can find a link to buy your tickets on KSAT.com. So if you're sitting outside eating chips and salsa, you don't have to worry about your chips getting cold. Nice mm. warm chips. Yeah. Did you ever have like a basket of warm chips? They kind of come out. Those are the you? best. And <laughs> Those are the best. Fresh, fresh out of the fryer. Yeah. 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 It is very hot out. I was just looking at these conditions. They just got updated. Um, our heat index is already up to 105. 94, the air temperature. Dew point is 75. And remember, the heat index is what it feels like to us. So the air temperature this afternoon is going to max out generally around 101. So we're certainly going to have a heat index higher than that. Could get as high as around 108 here in San Antonio, but maybe even a little bit higher than that across other portions of the area. So today's the CPS energy peak energy demand day. You're encouraged to lower your energy use between 3 and 7 p.m. to help ease, ease the strain on the power grid. So how can you do that? A big thing, minimize your appliance use during that time. If you have Got nobody in, in a room, just make sure you turn off the lights or in the bathroom or something like that. And you can also close your window blinds and shades to help cool things down just a little bit rather than uh, turning the thermostat down. So today is CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. So again, 94 at the airport feels like 105. New Braunfels, you're at 97, feeling like 108. Similar story over in Gonzales, down a bit closer to the Gulf Coast. We've got a heat index 113 in Beeville, 108 in Victoria, even out in Del Rio, 95, but feeling like 104. So why are these heat indices so elevated? It's because our dew points are staying elevated. They really haven't moved much during the day today. So when you get these dew points in the 70s, that air feels heavy and humid, and it also makes it feel hotter to our bodies than what the thermometer is actually reading. The kind of good news here is that we will have more of a breeze today than we did yesterday, but it's right off the Gulf of Mexico, so that's why our dew points are so high. But we should get these wind speeds between about 5 and 15 miles per hour later this afternoon and into the evening. That will help a little bit, but overall still very hot and dangerously hot if you don't stay hydrated and if you try to overdo it outdoors. So heat advisory goes into effect at 1 p.m. It will be in place until 8 p.m. this evening, and that includes everyone across the KSAP viewing area. So again, if you're going to be outside doing strenuous activity, please maybe try to avoid that and just make sure you don't overdo it and drink plenty of water. So here's where your high temperatures end up today around 105, 106 Eagle Pass up to Del Rio near 101 here in San San Antonio. I think we could even see a few spots in the hill country get close to that 99 100 degree mark. But again, the heat indices are going to be higher than that up to around 102 in the hill country and in around San Antonio 102 to 108. That includes along the I 35 corridor here. 
and then farther south and closer to the coast where dew points are just a bit higher. Your heat indices could be up between 108 and 112 this afternoon. We're already seeing numbers like that. So again, very hot uh, this afternoon and the story will be very similar this weekend because we've got the heat high sticking pretty close. That's going to keep us hot and rain free. However, there is a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel toward the end of the planning forecast by the middle of next week. A slight change in our weather pattern. Upper level low is able to drop down into the central plains and North Texas. That looks like it'll be our next shot at some low end rain chances. Temperature wise, I don't see a whole lot of change there, so we've just got to think cooler thoughts. Labor Day 10 days away. Fall begins in just 24 days. That's toward the end of September and Halloween was just 64 days away. It's going to be here before we know it, right? The year's just flying by. So think cool thoughts over the next several days because it is going to be very hot out there. Guys, smell the pumpkin spice. I need a jacket now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Yeah, it was good. It was good. good. It was some good effort. So the NBA took a couple of days off mm -hmm. to bring attention to that shooting up there in Wisconsin, but now they're apparently going back to work. Yes, and they are not playing today either. The three games scheduled will not be played, but the NBA says the playoffs will resume tomorrow after the Bucks initially boycotted play because of the shooting of Jacob Blake. Plus, in the NFL, Cowboys linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch will now call the plays on that side of the ball coming up. The NBA playoffs will continue in Orlando after games were postponed again Thursday. This coming after the Bucks decided to boycott Game 5 against Orlando Wednesday to protest the shooting of Jacob Blake in Wisconsin. Their move set off a chain reaction in sports. By the end of Wednesday night, 14 games across four U.S. leagues were postponed, all three apiece in the NBA, WNBA, three in Major League Baseball, and five in Major League Soccer. Utah Jazz guard and Wagner alum Jordan Clarkson says what happened to Blake is a hot topic inside the bubble. That's all we're talking about, um, just trying to make a difference and, and change um, and how we could relay the message and get the message out, keep continue to uh, progress that. So um, I feel like it's never not in the back of anybody's minds. Uh, we're all trying to, you know, be here, support it and uh, make change and, uh, you know, make people realize that we need it. The league says the playoffs will resume tomorrow and the league commits to work with players on several social justice initiatives. Under head coach Mike McCarthy, Cowboys linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch was moved to middle linebacker to allow Jalen Smith a chance to blitz the opposing quarterback more often from the weak side linebacker position. And McCarthy's also made Van Der Esch, who is back from offseason neck surgery after missing seven games last season, his defensive play caller on the field. I want the weight to be on my shoulders. Um, I want to be able to get everybody lined up. Like I said, I want to be that leader of the defense this year and just make sure everybody's in the right spots and just so we can fly around and make plays and, and get the ball for our offense. It put things in perspective for me last year, missing half the season and just not taking things for granted and just knowing I gotta go out there every single play and just put it on there on the line for my teammates. Van Der Esch was still able to make 72 tackles in just nine games after making 104 in 16 games in his rookie season. After having to shut down their operations early on Wednesday due to Hurricane Laura, the Texans are back on the field last night for their scrimmage. This is extremely important since the NFL season kicks off in less than two weeks when the Texans travel to Kansas City to face the defending Super Bowl champions. The Texans needed this one. I feel like we got a lot out of it. I mean, it wasn't, you know, obviously, you know, we, we weren't really going live. We, we did a lot of thud situations. We did get a lot of situations done. We were, you know, we had third down. We were in the red area. We had long drives. Um, we got a lot of special teams work done. Uh, we were able to get a lot done. We were, we were able to get a lot of guys on film, which is good. Um, we'll probably do this to some degree, probably one more time. O'Brien said they warmed up like it was a game and that this is a fun team to coach. David, Ursula. All right. Thanks, Larry. There's you know, some you, unfairness yeah. going on. You remember yesterday we kind of, I don't think we complained. We just kind of merely pointed out the fact they didn't bring the food into the studio Well, yesterday. they brought it in so, and they're not giving us yeah, any. One step closer, just not over here. Yet. Yeah.
Yeah. We're working on it. We're we finish we finish strong on Fridays. <laughs> yes. Mm. Look at that. It's the last Friday of August Ooh, and we are ending fair. the week in our usual fashion with food. And then some more food and maybe a bit more and then throw in a cookie. How about some comfort food? Copa Wine Bar and Tasting Room is serving up their take and bake. Then we're going to wash it down with their special drink. And hey, nothing like a good cookie. Our friends over there at Bird Bakery have some of the best and you can eat a cookie for a cause. David Elder found a great place for date night. See why this hill country spot is getting a lot of attention. Okay, after the cookies, the date night, you might want something healthy. We're gonna show you where you can eat out and eat healthy. Speaking of healthy, it's Friday. That means it's time to get fit. We have the perfect workout for you and your best friend if you want them to be a part of it. Yes, and to top things off, we have some beautiful music composed by a local high schooler. And it's National Red Wine Day. Yeah. How do you like like your wine in a box or in a can because you know sometimes we're not fancy here on a say live <laughs> your comments, you know it's kind of like Boone's farm versus md 2020 hey social media and tag us at say live <laughs> oh, buckle up it's gonna be a fun ride say live is just minutes away